Hi, I'm Teresa Momber, illustrator for Gina K Designs and Stamp TV. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a card using my new stamp set called Dashing. In this video, I will show you how to use the poinsettia image and color it with Copic markers and then go over it to add some more shading using Prismacolor colored pencils. So let's get started. Begin by stamping the poinsettia image using Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto white cardstock. Fill in the berries at the center of the flowers using Copic marker YG03. For the petals, start with Copic marker R27 and use this along the center lines and then along the base of each petal. Now I'm going to speed up the video a bit so you don't have to sit through every second of my coloring. Switch to Copic marker R24 and continue coloring, blending out a little bit from the previous color and also using this marker to outline each of the petals. Now use Copic marker R00 to fill in the remaining open areas of the petals. I also used this color to fill in the area behind the berries. Now if you're happy with your coloring, you can stop here. But if you'd like, you can layer colored pencil over the Copic markers. And I'm using a Prismacolor pencil called Crimson Lake to start. I'm using this pencil where I have the deepest coloring on the flowers and using it to blend into lighter areas. Next, I'm using a Prisma colored pencil called Crimson Red, and I'm just using this to blend out from the previous color.
The next color I'm using is called Scarlet Lake and I'm once again just blending out from the last color and working into the lighter areas. After coloring, use scissors to cut out the image. For the background, I started by creating a frame mask by cutting the center away from a piece of cardstock that was trimmed to four and three quarters by three and a half inches. And I cut a piece of white cardstock the same size and then used repositionable tape to adhere the frame mask to the cardstock. With the mask in place, begin sponging using Gina K. Sweet Corn Ink. I'm concentrating the ink a little darker in the center and working out so that it's lighter near the sides with this yellow ink. And I'm also tapping off the excess ink onto scratch paper to create a pretty soft look. Next, I'm using warm cocoa ink to layer over the yellow, and this time I'm starting at the edges and working my way in. I'm also using the Sheet Music Background Stamp from the Home for the Holidays Stamp TV kit to stamp on my background. But I'm creating a very soft impression with this image by stamping off onto scratch paper first using warm cocoa ink. Then I'll stamp it onto my background. And you can see it creates a very subtle look on the background. But if you prefer a bolder look, you could use the warm cocoa ink full strength instead of stamping off. Stamp the sentiment in the lower left hand corner using Gina K Black Onyx ink. The next step is to stamp the evergreen branches on the background but I want to be careful about where I place them. So I'm putting the image approximately where I want it on the finished project and then using a pencil to lightly mark where I'd like my branches to be stamped. I'm using the larger stamp first and stamping it with Gina K grass green ink and I'm using that in a few places and then switching to the smaller branch and stamping a few more times.
Now remove your mask frame. Next, adhere the poinsettia image to the background using dimensional adhesive foam squares. One thing I should note, and I probably do this on almost every card, adding the image with the dimensional foam squares before assembling the card is probably a little more difficult than if I would just assemble my layers um, and then add the image as the final step. It would definitely be easier to use that tape runner on the layers if they were nice and flat rather than all bulked up with a dimensional adhesive. But regardless of whether you add your image before or after, to assemble the card, adhere your background to a piece of fresh asparagus cardstock that's trimmed slightly larger, and then adhere both layers to a piece of black cardstock that's trimmed slightly larger than that. And then finally, adhere all your assembled layers to a five and a half by four and a quarter inch white card base. And that completes today's video. Thanks for watching.